All right, so now I've had you do your first exercise of trying to sort of reverse engineer what is the direction of this vector. So I had you take a dot product of this with u and with v. And what you should have seen is, is that actually the dot products of both of those are zero. So what that tells us is this vector we get from the cross product is perpendicular to both u and both v, right? Remember, the dot product of two vectors is zero if and only if they're perpendicular. So this must be perpendicular to both u and v. Um, and actually, let me quickly, I'm going to switch u and v for a reason I'll explain in a second. Uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. Because I'm actually going to put v up here and u down here now. Um, OK, so what I can say is, all right, so this is perpendicular to u and v. So let me try to draw a vector like that that's perpendicular. And okay, so let me let me indicate the right angles. So here we got this right angle, and then we've got this right angle here. Oops, hang on. That to be parallel to the axis, and then we're going to drop that. Okay. All right. So so that that's perpendicular. This this u cross v, um, and it has the magnitude of the area of the parallelogram spanned by these two vectors. Okay. So now I know a lot. But but hang on a second. So so there, there's another vector I could choose that's that's perpendicular to both of these, right? And and that has that magnitude. I could, I could also choose the reflection of this vector, right? You know, it's this is still perpendicular to both, and it still has the same length. Um, so how do I know which which one to choose? Okay, so it turns out the way that this is defined, um, we follow something called the right hand rule. So this is actually not u cross v. This is actually v cross u. So this is interesting. So, so the cross product is not commutative. What that means is, unlike the dot product, the order actually matters. So the dot product didn't matter if I took v dot u or u dot v. It was going to give me the same answer. Not true of the cross product. The magnitude will be the same of u cross v and v cross u. Right? The magnitude doesn't change if I, if I go the opposite direction. Um, but the direction will be exactly the opposite. And you can see that if I, f you, can, you, can, you should verify this yourself, but if I swap the coordinates of u and v, so I make u, d, e, f, and v, a, b, c, you'll see that you get the same thing up to a sign. So you'll, you'll get c, e minus b, f, and a, f minus c, d, and, and, and d, b minus a, e. So you'll get the same thing, but in reverse. And the way that we figure out which one we're going to get visually without, if we're not looking at coordinates, but we just want to be able to draw a picture like this, um, we use something called the right hand rule. So what you do is take your hand, your right hand, put it in the direction of the vector u. So point your fingers in the direction of the vector u. Now have your palm point in the direction of v, and then twist your hand around and your thumb if you're given a thumbs up with your right hand, will point in the direction of u cross v. So try that for yourself. So fingers point in the direction of u, palm points in the direction of v, and then you cross, you circle your hand around, and then the thumbs up gives you the direction. So notice, okay, if I do the same thing, but I start my, my fingers pointing at v, and, and I point my palm towards u, you notice I'm actually, I actually end up giving the thumbs down in this example, okay? So pointing in V and then going towards U, I get the thumbs down. This is a little tough to show virtually. If we were in class, we would all practice this together. Um, but so that's the right-hand rule. And this is very useful because if we specify these points, A, B, and C, that we use to create these vectors in a counterclockwise order, by convention. What we can say, whoops, I don't like that arrow there. Uh, let me get rid of that. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get these arrows right for the curved things. But okay, so let's say I specify A first, B second, and then C. So I walk around it in this order here. So this is counterclockwise order. Um, then the convention is that it's the same thing. If, if I wrap my right hand around, my fingers go in a counterclockwise order, and the thumb gives me a direction. Uh, we call this the normal to the triangle A, B, and C. So the triangle A, B, C has this normal, I'll call it N, 
I'll often use n for, for normal. Um, this is the vector that's perpendicular to the triangle. And by convention, it's the one that, that points up with respect to the counterclockwise order with your right hand. And so we can compute this normal, for, given these three points, by we can compute the normal direction by taking b minus a and c minus b, or so, sorry, c minus a, and then doing the cross product. So if, if we specified a, b, and c, then the normal direction, not necessarily unit normalized, but, but a vector that points in this direction is b minus a cross c minus a. OK. Now, if, if I specify them in a different order, if, if, if I actually specify the points a, c, b, then the normal would, would be assumed to be going the other way. Um, so then I would get c minus a cross b minus a, and that, that points the other way. So you have to be aware of that. Um, and one of the things that's, that's really useful about this is, okay, so three points determine a plane. So if we're given A, B, and C, that determines a plane. And if we give them in this order, this determines what's up, what's above the plane, and what's below the plane. So if I want to then figure out if a point, so this is the last task in part one. If I then want to figure out if this point here, I'll call it P, is below or above the plane that's oriented this way. So we say oriented. So, so it's pointing up when that's up. Um, all I have to do is create a vector from A to P. And then remember, how do we figure out, OK, so using the dot product, what can we say about angles? Well, if this P is below the plane determined by these three points with this orientation, then this angle is actually going to be greater than 90 degrees. So what I can say is the dot product of P minus A dot the normal should be less than zero. Right? If you remember from the dot product thing, any time you have an angle greater than 90 degrees, it's really because of this identity. Cosine of an angle between 90 and 180 degrees is negative. So if it's below the plane, then the dot product between P minus a and and some vector on this plane we can just say we'll just say uh, oh no i'm sorry the dot product between that and the normal right because this is the normal direction um is going to be negative okay so and you can see that angle there okay now if it's on the plane i have to think for a second we'll talk about planes a little bit more in the next module but but if if this happens to be on the plane Take a second and try to think, well, what, what would the dot product be if I constructed a vector from A to the point and then took the dot product if it's on that on the plane spanned by that triangle? So just take a moment and think about that. Well, so anything on the plane is actually perpendicular. Like, for example, if I chose this point B, then A, B minus A is actually just the vector U. And remember, U is perpendicular to that normal direction. So anything I choose on the plane is perpendicular. In that case, the dot product of P minus A and the normal is actually equal to zero if you're on the plane. I should let me write these all down. So, so if I'm below the plane, then P minus A dot N is less than zero. OK. Um, if I am on the plane, then p minus a dot n is going to be directly equal to zero. So see, this is kind of neat. We're using the dot product and the cross product together. So we're taking a cross product, and then we're, we're, we're taking it with the dot product of something else, um, not necessarily u and v, but, but some other vector we construct to a point. And so the last case is when that point is above the plane. So let's say it was over here. And I'll construct this vector from A to the point P. And notice how, actually, now we can see pretty clearly that this angle is an acute angle when it's above the plane. So when it's above, we have P minus A dot N is greater than 0. So that's how you would complete the last test. So you compute the normal this way. 
So B minus A cross C minus A. And this is just following the right-hand rule, agreeing that a convention is, is counterclockwise A, B, C. Okay, so we're saying if that's a counterclockwise order, when it, the order that you specify the points in, then I know how to orient my normal. And the cross product will give it to us. Um, and once we've done that, we can construct another vector that we use to figure out whether this point is above, on, or below that triangle. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to mention is, <clears throat> so this gives us a vector which is in the direction of the normal, and, and that's all we need to do, do these tests. Um, but sometimes we actually want this vector to be a unit vector. Um, we'll see a really good reason why when we get to illumination in a few weeks. Um, so just, I, I just want you to, to remember how to normalize. You always divide, so, so I'll say n norm is equal to n over the magnitude of n. So I would just divide by the magnitude of this cross product. And I would get a vector which is in the same direction, but it actually has magnitude of one. So magnitude one vectors are pretty useful. All right, so I'm just gonna have you do a couple quick exercises and, and that's really it for this module. No coding, actually. Um, the coding is just, you know, try to get the assignment done part one. That'll put all this stuff into action. Okay.